Welcome back to Sissy Maya. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to never miss an update. Additionally, consider subscribing to my Patreon to get access to these features, and much more. I can't pinpoint the exact moment the idea first crossed my mind. It wasn't sudden, rather a gradual evolution spanning many years. Initially, the notion of doing anything other than combing my hair felt daunting. Hair care had always seemed like a feminine concern to me, yet I identified as male. So, how did I find myself in a salon waiting room, surrounded by unfamiliar sights and scents, a mix of excitement and apprehension swirling within me as I anticipated my first permanent wave? Growing up in the 1960s as a teenager, I was part of the era characterized by long hair. Though I never let mine grow exceptionally long, it did reach a length that surpassed the norms I had known. Cascading down to my shoulders, it demanded more attention than a simple shampoo and towel dry routine. Drying it took time, and I had to use conditioner to prevent tangles. Moreover, I found myself navigating through a plethora of hair care products, shampoos, conditioners, and sprays all promising to enhance the hair care experience. During the 70s, as I navigated through my college years, I shifted from barbers to stylists for my haircuts. Unexpectedly, this transition exposed me to the diverse possibilities of hair styling. While my mother occasionally experimented with rollers and home perms, my own interaction with hair care had been limited to basic haircuts. Stepping into salons, I was overwhelmed by the myriad options available. I found myself captivated by the prospect of transforming my appearance dramatically. However, this desire seemed like a distant dream. At times, I envied the freedom girls had to experiment with their hair, prompting fleeting worries about my own identity. For years, I grappled with this inner conflict, meticulously selecting shampoos and conditioners based on both their effectiveness and sensory appeal. I experimented with various products, yearning to add volume to my fine, limp hair, all while concealing my interest in what I perceived as feminine pursuits. I made several attempts at home perms, wrestling with rollers in futile attempts to achieve the desired curls, fearing a botched perm more than having none at all. Similarly, I dabbled in temporary hair colors, staying close to my natural dark blonde shade. I longed to play with my hair without revealing my unconventional interests. Marriage offered me a closer glimpse into my wife's daily hair care routines, particularly when her sister, a hairdresser, performed foil highlights and perms right in our kitchen. Although fascinated, I never entertained the thought of having my own hair styled, it felt too daunting. For years, I wrestled with this fear, often observing perms being done, even from afar, such as sitting on benches outside more salons while my wife shopped. Over time, as more salons openly embraced unisex services and men began getting perms, it seemed like my moment had arrived. Yet, I hesitated, apprehensive of my wife's reaction, as she had never shown any sympathy towards my occasional hints of interest. In her absence, I seized the chance to experiment with her hair tools, rollers, curling iron, and hot rollers. Despite my attempts, I never quite mastered the art, always washing out the resulting curls long before her expected return. Then, less than a month ago, she caught me unexpectedly in her hot rollers. I sheepishly confessed my fascination with my hair, to which she responded with surprise, yet support. If you enjoy curls, why not get a perm? I'll ask my sister to do it for your birthday next month. I hesitated, feeling embarrassed at the prospect, preferring not to have it done by someone familiar. Fine, she relented, choose a salon, and I'll cover the cost as a birthday gift. Just let me know when and where. I have no idea where to start, I admitted, my excitement tinged with apprehension about potential reactions from salon staff. I know just the place, she assured me. There's a quaint salon on the outskirts of town that should suit you perfectly. Driving past, I scoped out the salon's activity, wondering if its layout provided privacy. The name, The New You, sounded promising. Nestled on the second floor of a small strip mall, it shared space with a music school, a travel agency, a restaurant, and a gift shop below. It seemed secluded enough, and as far as I knew, none of my acquaintances frequented it. 
But would it offer enough privacy? Would I risk encountering someone I knew? Despite my desire for a perm, worries gnawed at me. What would people think? Would I be satisfied with the outcome? Throughout this period, my wife persisted in urging me to schedule an appointment, eager for the perm to be her birthday gift to me. One Tuesday morning, I made the call. I'm curious if there's any treatment that could give my fine, limp hair more volume, I inquired. Absolutely, sir. A perm sounds like the perfect solution. Would you like to schedule an appointment? Yes, please. Our quietest time is usually in the mornings, she informed me. We have an opening for a perm this Friday morning at 9.30. Would that suit you? I confirmed. Great, be here at 9.30 and anticipate about three hours. It would be best if you wore loose-fitting attire. Megan will be your stylist. Can I have your name and phone number? With that, I was committed. They had my information, and there was no turning back. In just over 72 hours, I would finally go through with it, I would get a perm. Excitement and apprehension swirled within me as I waited for the time to pass. I informed my wife of my upcoming perm appointment. I'm glad you're doing it, especially on your birthday. They're known for delivering exactly what people want. Who's your stylist? I mentioned Megan, unsure of what to request since I'd never had a perm before. What kind of look are you hoping for with your perm? She inquired. Do you want to maintain your current style but with added volume, or are you considering a more significant change? I think I'd like some change, otherwise, what's the point of getting a perm? I replied. But I'm not sure what to ask for. I don't want anything too drastic. What will people think? Don't worry about others' opinions, she reassured me. I'd be happy to speak with Megan before your appointment. I have a good sense of the look you're aiming for, and I can ensure she understands your preferences. Would you really do that? That would be fantastic. I wasn't sure what to expect. I'm eager for it, yet at the same time, I'm feeling nervous. I'd be happy to help, she replied reassuringly. Just leave everything to me. Your first perm will be unforgettable, and you don't need to worry about what to ask for. By the way, why don't you take the rest of the day off from work? There's no point in going in for just a few hours on a Friday afternoon, and it'll give you some time to adjust to your new look before returning to work. Why did I wait so long to confide in her? I pondered. I was mistaken about her reaction. No anger, no teasing, just acceptance and willingness to assist. This is going to be amazing. What a birthday it will be, Thursday night. I was so excited about my appointment that sleep eluded me. For the first time in months, I woke up without the alarm clock. Groping for my glasses on the bedside table, I saw the red digits on the clock come into focus. 6 a.m., and I didn't have to leave until 8.30. It's going to be a long morning, I thought. After showering and washing my hair, I started shaving, not that I needed to shave every day, given my slow-growing and light-coloured beard, but just to pass the time. Peering at my reflection in the mirror, I tried to envision how I would look later that day. I hadn't realised my hair had grown so long. I had postponed a trim when my wife discovered me, and on her suggestion, I let it grow to give the stylist more options. Now it almost reached the tops of my shoulder blades. I had a light breakfast, donned jeans and a sweatshirt, and at 8.30, I got into the car and drove to the salon. I nearly drove away without entering, but my wife's words before I left home encouraged me. As she bid me farewell, she whispered in my ear, If Megan does as I asked, your hair will look absolutely marvellous. I'm eager to see how it turns out. Promise me you'll return home promptly once she's finished with you. And don't change a thing. Give yourself time to adjust, and remember, I want to see the new you as soon as possible. I parked as close to the door as I could, glanced around to ensure no one was watching, and entered. It matched my expectations perfectly. Upon entering, I spotted a tall, slanted desk with a large book open on top. A telephone sat in a corner of the desk, and an attractive receptionist with golden curls framing her face was perched on a tall stool. 
I waited while she concluded a phone call. He's just arrived. Yes, I think you'll be very pleased with the outcome, she said. Hanging up, she greeted me warmly. You must be Megan's makeover client. I'm Emma, and I'll be assisting her. I noticed you're wearing a sweatshirt. That might pose a bit of an issue later, but I'm sure we'll manage. Please take a seat, and Megan will be with you shortly. What sort of issue? I inquired. And I'm here for a perm, not a makeover. We just want to ensure your new look isn't disrupted by pulling a sweatshirt over your head. We have something else for you to wear home, so there's no need to worry. Taking a seat in a wicker chair with a plush red corduroy pillow, I surveyed the salon. Baskets filled with magazines dotted the waiting area floor, while framed images of women sporting intricate hairstyles adorned the walls. In the salon work area, a wall entirely mirrored reflected three chairs arranged in front of them, looking more inviting than those at my previous salon. Opposite, three sinks with low chairs lined the wall, accompanied by chrome hairdryers. Nearby stood a wheeled table and two chairs, one on each side. That's our manicure area, Emma explained, I handle that too. Beyond, a door led off behind the receptionist's desk. That's where you'll find a changing room and some other special rooms. Soft instrumental music played in the background, lulling me into relaxation. Feeling the effects of a restless night, I thought I might easily drift off. It's a bit early, but would you like a glass of wine while you wait? Emma offered. I don't drink often, but I think now's a good time, I replied. Just don't be surprised if I start to nod off. Not a problem, Emma smiled. In fact, it shows trust, which we appreciate. Just then, the salon door swung open, and a slender redhead with a French braid hurried in. Apologies for being late, she said, I'm Megan. I've been eager to work on you since your wife explained what she wants us to do. A perm, right? I confirmed. If you'd kindly go to the changing room, strip down to your underpants, and don one of the robes, we'll be ready to begin, Megan instructed. You can store your clothes in one of the lockers. Strip down? Why? I queried. We don't want your clothes to get wet or stained by the solutions we'll use on your hair, Megan explained. That makes sense, I thought, finishing my wine and heading to the changing room. Most lockers were filled with women's clothing, but eventually, I found an empty one. Donning a pink terrycloth robe with pastel yellow trim, not to my taste, but functional, I returned to the main salon area. Megan awaited me at a sink. She seated me, took my glasses, wrapped a towel around my neck, draped a cape over my shoulders, and instructed me to lean back over the sink. We'll begin with a pre-treatment for your hair, so it's prepared for today's processes. I'll apply it to your dry hair and leave it for about 20 minutes before rinsing and shampooing, Megan explained, turning to a counter and preparing a mixture in a plastic bottle. Without my glasses, the details were blurred, but I watched attentively nonetheless. Sue slipped on a pair of rubber gloves, remarking, my hands are a bit dry, so I'll wear gloves today, before dispensing the contents of the bottle onto my hair. It felt slightly cold with a faintly acrid scent. Working up a lather, she massaged it through my hair, from scalp to ends. After a few minutes, she set a timer and asked, are you comfortable? I'll be back in about twenty minutes to rinse your hair. Lost in drowsiness, I didn't reply. I must be more tired than I realized, I thought. Drifting off, I was startled awake by Megan's return moments later. She adjusted the water temperature and asked, How's this? Just a tad warmer, I murmured. As warm water cascaded over my head, my hair became wet and heavy, inducing a sense of relaxation. Megan's firm fingers worked through my hair, removing the lather. After about three minutes, she finished rinsing. Now for the shampoo, she announced, dispensing some into her hand and working up a lather. The shampoo carried a fleeting hint of vanilla and produced the richest, thickest lather I'd ever experienced. Once again, my hair was thoroughly rinsed, and Megan wrapped a towel around my head in a turban style, guiding me to the middle chair. As I sat there, my back to the mirror, Megan wheeled a cart beside my chair. I noticed several bins on the cart, 
each filled with perm rods of various colors. Removing the towel from my head, she gently combed through my hair, untangling any knots left from shampooing. Dividing my hair into roughly six sections, she secured each section with a long silver clip. Today, we'll be doing something a bit different based on your wife's request, Megan explained. With your hair length, we'll do what's called a piggyback perm. This involves winding the hair onto two rods for more even curls from roots to ends. I'll start by winding the hair onto a rod halfway up, then wind it to the scalp, leaving the ends loose. Next, I'll wind the ends onto another rod and fasten it above the first. It'll take a bit longer, but the results are worth it. Since your wife mentioned you're taking the afternoon off, the extra time won't be an issue. Feeling relaxed from the combination of sleepiness, wine, and soothing music, I replied, I trust your expertise. Do what you think is best. Not just what I think, but what your wife has in mind, Megan clarified with a smile. Now, I'll start rolling your hair. Are you comfortable? I'm fine. Could you turn the chair so I can see the mirror? I'd like to watch, I requested. I'm sorry, but it's necessary for you to keep your glasses off, and it's more convenient for me to work with you facing this direction. Is that all right with you? You're the stylist. Whatever works best, I replied. Megan took a comb and began separating my hair into small strands near the front of my scalp, slightly narrower than the rod and about half an inch deep. She ran the comb through from scalp to ends, gently holding it extended with one hand. With her other hand, she grabbed a piece of shiny paper, folding it to cover the strand on both sides, then slid it about halfway out from my scalp. Taking a pink rod, she started winding it down toward the scalp at a 45-degree angle. The pull on my hair was noticeable but not painful. Next, she placed an end paper at the strand's end left hanging off the first rod, and wound another rod down to the lower one, securing it in place. She quickly established a rhythm as she worked her way backward, from the crown of my head down to the nape of my neck. Periodically, she lightly sprayed my hair with water to keep it damp. I was surprised at the number of rods she was using. The style your wife requested requires many rods. Plus, remember, a piggyback perm uses twice as many rods anyway, Megan explained. Once she finished the first row, resembling railroad ties along my scalp, she began a section above my right ear, running perpendicular to the initial row of rods. My scalp started to tingle all over from the slight but constant pull of the rods, and I could feel the additional weight of the damp wound rods on my head. She proceeded to roll row after row until the right side was complete, then transitioned to the left side, repeating the process. Finally, after what felt like nearly an hour, she finished. I think we've used more rods than I've ever used before, Megan chuckled, well over 140. Are you still comfortable? She then misted my hair once more with the spray bottle. Applying some cream, she gently dabbed it on my skin around the hairline, then encircled my scalp with a white fringe using a long strip of cotton rope. This will prevent any perm solution from reaching your face or neck, she explained. Now, we're ready to apply the perm solution. With your hair length and the number of rods, we'll be using two perm kits today. Turning to the cart, she retrieved two bottles, pouring each into a plastic squeeze bottle and shaking them to mix. She repeated the process for the second perm in another bottle. Last chance to change your mind, she teased. Not a chance, I replied, do your thing, I trust you. She draped a fresh towel around my neck, refastened the cape, and starting at the nape of my neck, she began applying a cool, slippery liquid onto the rods. Despite the strong odor, which I oddly found appealing, she apologized. Sorry about the smell, Megan said, but we need a potent perm for the look your wife requested. No problem, I reassured her, I don't mind. As one rod after another became saturated, my head grew heavier and heavier. She worked her way up to the crown, then moved to the sides. As she began on the top, she handed me a towel to catch any spills onto my face. At last, she completed the process, leaving me with a head full of damp rods. Removing the cotton roping, she replaced it and covered my head with a plastic cap resembling a shower cap, 
then guided me back to a hairdryer. After settling into the chair, she lowered the hood over my head, switched it on, and informed me, it'll need at least twenty minutes to set your curls. I'll check on them then. If it gets too warm, just let me know, but it needs to be quite warm to form the curls properly. Would you like another glass of wine while you wait? I accepted another glass of wine, drifting into daydreams about my anticipated new appearance. The music grew louder, and I realized there were speakers embedded in the dryer. Unbeknownst to me, I drifted off to sleep once more, lulled by the warmth, music, wine, and the previous night's lack of sleep. I awoke to Megan's voice saying, time to assess the curls. She switched off the dryer, raised the hood, removed the cap, and partially unwound a rod. I think we need another ten minutes for the desired curl, she remarked. May I use the restroom? I inquired. It's been quite a long morning. Glancing at the clock, I noticed it was already noon. As long as you're quick, she replied, we don't want the curls to cool off. The restroom is adjacent to the changing room. No problem, I assured her. I was taken aback to find that the men's restroom lacked a mirror, but I surmised it was to prevent clients from disturbing the stylist's work. Returning to the dryer, I resumed my seat. Despite the blurred reflection I caught of my head in the mirror, I could discern the multitude of rods in my hair. I'm thoroughly enjoying this experience. Being pampered feels delightful, and having curls will be marvelous. Why did I wait so long to try this? I pondered. Megan lowered the hood, restarted the dryer, and adjusted the timer once more. To my surprise, Megan returned sooner than expected. Pausing the dryer again, she raised the hood, removed the cap, and unwound a different rod this time. Looks good, she remarked, now it's time to rinse. Initially, she used several hand towels to blot the rods. Removing as much perm solution as possible before rinsing is beneficial, she explained as we made our way back to the sink. Sitting down, I tilted my head as she removed the cotton, then she began spraying warm water over my head. Your hair needs to rinse for about five minutes to eliminate all the perm solution. As warm water streamed over my head, the perm scent gradually dissipated. My thoughts drifted to my next potential perm. I could get used to this, I commented. Megan chuckled, many of our clients say the same thing. After roughly five minutes, Megan instructed me to sit up. She wrapped a towel around my head and gently pressed against the rods. Then, she meticulously dried each individual rod with hand towels. Despite the slight tugging sensation from the rods against my hair, I found it oddly pleasant. What's next, the neutralizer? I queried. For some perms, yes, but for yours, we're opting for a different approach. We'll be air neutralizing your perm, which is gentler on your hair and provides superior curl formation, Megan explained. What does that entail? I inquired. Exactly as it sounds. We allow your hair to dry on the rods, and the oxygen in the air neutralizes the perm, locking the curl into place, Megan clarified. Wouldn't that take a while? I questioned. It would if we let it dry naturally, but after thirty minutes, we'll place you back under the dryer set to low. It's lunchtime, would you like some food from the restaurant downstairs? Megan offered. That would be fantastic. I didn't realize how hungry I was. I'll have a burger and fries. Sue, could you please grab lunch for my client? No problem, I'd be happy to. I handed her a ten dollar bill, she left, and then Megan placed a gauze-like cloth over my hair. This is a hairnet, it'll help keep your rods in place to protect the curls as they set. I'm sorry, but the only color available today is pink. I hope you don't mind. I'm sitting here with a head full of pink perm rods, and you think I'll mind a pink hairnet? I chuckled. By the way, you mentioned this was a quiet time, but I'm surprised at how peaceful it's been. Your wife anticipated you might be nervous, so she arranged for you to be our only customer. It's a service we provide for our makeover clients. What's this makeover you keep mentioning? It's a special service your wife ordered along with your perm. You've already undergone some of it, and more will come while your perm is air neutralizing. And my wife arranged all of this. 
Yes, she did. She wanted your first perm to be a memorable occasion, an experience of a lifetime. We do about 20 makeovers a month, all through word-of-mouth referrals. Actually, you're lucky we could fit you in time for your birthday. I suppose it must be all right then. Oh, here comes Emma with my lunch. That was quick. Thanks, Emma, you can keep the change. Megan returned my glasses and said, as long as you're very careful not to disturb the rods, you can wear them for a while longer. There's a lunch table in the changing room if you prefer to eat there. I got up and headed to the room. Passing by the mirror, I peered at my head, but the net made it difficult to see much. You have about twenty minutes to eat before you go back under the dryer. Would you like something to drink with your meal? Unfortunately, all we have is more of the wine you've already had. I suppose that would be fine. It's actually a very good wine. After finishing my lunch and polishing off the rest of my wine, I returned to the dryer. Emma approached, settled me into the chair, and switched on the dryer. Megan will be back shortly. In the meantime, it's time for the next step of the makeover. I'll be giving you a manicure while your hair dries. A hey, what? I'm not here for a manicure. Actually, you are. It's part of the makeover your wife specifically requested. Maybe I was getting caught up in the spirit of the day, maybe I had indulged a bit too much in the wine, or perhaps I simply didn't want to disappoint my wife, but I relented. All right, my hands are in your hands, I quipped. Sue took my hands, dipping them into a bowl of liquid. After a few moments, she took my right hand and lightly filed the nails with an emery board, shaping them to match my fingertips, pushing back the cuticles, and then brushing on something. I thought to object, but the music, the wine, and the desire not to let down my wife led me to remain silent. Once again, I drifted off. As if in a haze, I heard Megan return. How's he doing? She inquired of Emma. He was a bit hesitant at first, but he eventually agreed to the manicure. That special wine always seems to break down their resistance so effectively. Good, the later stages of the makeover are much more enjoyable if our client is cooperative. As I struggled to fully awaken, I noticed that my nails seemed to have grown. They were almost an inch long and painted a vivid red. I would have protested, but for some reason, it didn't seem like such a big deal anymore. Welcome back from your nap, Megan greeted me. Are you ready for the next phase of your makeover? I suppose so, I muttered. Fantastic. Now, Emma will give you a pedicure while I work on your brows. Ready? I wanted to object, but the words escaped me. Emma removed my shoes and socks, tending to my toenails with trimming, filing, and painting them the same color as my fingers. Meanwhile, Megan was occupied with plucking my eyebrows. It stung, but I didn't resist, it just felt easier to let her work while I drifted along with the music. Soon, I found myself strangely enjoying the process of having my nails done. Where did that thought come from? I pondered. After Emma finished with my toes, she applied some warm, soft substance on my legs, allowing it to harden before pulling it off. Ouch, that hurts, I exclaimed. It's just the hairs being pulled out by the wax treatment, she explained. Next, we'll move on to your arms and chest, and then we'll shave your armpits. For some reason, this all struck me as rather amusing, and I couldn't help but giggle. Good, remarked Emma, he won't put up any more resistance. Meanwhile, Megan had completed shaping my brows and was inspecting my hair to check if it was dry. Once she confirmed that my hair was dry, Megan began removing the perm rods. As I glanced at myself in the mirror, I noticed that each strand she unwound was incredibly curly, almost halving its previous length. I resembled a red-haired version of Shirley Temple. Oh yes, Megan interjected, that initial treatment was a hair dye, and now you're a redhead. Don't fret over how curly your hair is, we're not finished yet. We still need to set it. From now on, you'll need to set it every time you shampoo unless you prefer those dangling curls. They do look quite charming, and you might consider styling your hair that way for special occasions. We even have some ribbons that could add a nice touch. Oddly enough, this idea appealed to me, even though part of me wanted to protest against the changes. 
Nevertheless, I found myself saying, I'll be sure to give it a try soon. Megan then led me back to the sink, thoroughly wet my hair, and began combing it. I noticed that the comb struggled much more with the curls than it did with my straight hair. We moved to the styling chair, where she applied a gel-like substance to my wet hair and combed it through. Then, she took a large plastic roller, which she referred to as magnetic, and began winding my hair around it. Once she finished each section, she secured the roller with a white plastic pin against my scalp to prevent it from shifting. This process required far fewer rollers than rods and was completed in about 20 minutes. With a hairnet placed over my rollers and cotton pads protecting my ears, I returned to the dryer, where Emma offered me another glass of wine, which I accepted without hesitation. The music once again filled the room. While you're under the dryer, it's time to attend to your face, Megan announced. Since it looks like you shaved this morning, we can begin with a moisturizer. She uncapped a jar of cream and massaged a small amount into my facial skin. Then, she dabbed what she referred to as foundation onto various points of my face, smoothing it evenly to cover the entire surface. Following this, she applied what she termed as powder, to prevent any shine on your nose. Next, a hint of blush, in pink, was added. Taking a petite brush, she swirled it against a plastic container before sweeping it across my cheekbones in circular motions. An unexpected thought crossed my mind, I hadn't realized makeup could be this enjoyable. I'd like to try it again. Now, let's focus on your eyes. It's a shame to hide them behind those glasses, but we can address that later, she remarked. Beginning with eyeliner, she delicately drew lines along the edges of my eyelids, smudging them with her fingertip as I involuntarily blinked. Now for some eye shadow. Considering your red hair and blue eyes, I think green would complement your features beautifully. Using a small sponge affixed to a stick, she applied the shadow across my eyelids, blending it upwards in a curved fashion. Then, she used an eyebrow pencil to define my newly arched and slimmed brows. Next came a contraption resembling a cross between scissors and pliers. This is an eyelash curler. Many women would envy your lashes, she noted before carefully positioning it over my lashes and holding it shut for several seconds. Moving on to mascara, she used a bristly brush on a thin handle, applying it to my lower lashes with a twisting motion before repeating the process on the upper lashes. Just right. Now, the other eye, she said as she repeated the procedure. Now for your lips. Pucker up, she instructed, using a brush resembling a small watercolor brush to outline the outer edges of my lips with what she called lip liner. Then, she applied a tube of red lipstick, filling in the lips with color. Placing a piece of tissue against my mouth, she instructed, press down with your lips. Afterward, she applied another coat and finished with a light dusting of powder, to make it last longer, she explained. At that moment, Megan returned to inspect my hair. All dry. Time to complete your look, she announced. I followed her to the styling chair and took a seat. With meticulous care, she unwound each roller, revealing much larger curls than those produced by the perm. After removing all the rollers, she began brushing my hair. Selecting strands, she fashioned curls around my face and gathered a handful of hair from the back, securing it high on my head with a clip and allowing curls to cascade down. The sides were arranged into a curly poof effect behind my ears. A silk flower was placed behind my right ear, followed by what felt like an entire can of hairspray to set the style. Anticipation built within me as I wondered if I could replicate the look on my own. One final touch for your makeover, Megan announced, producing a chrome-plated instrument. With a snap, I felt a stinging sensation as she pierced my right earlobe, repeating the process twice more on the cartilage. Two studs and a hoop earring. Would you like the same on the other side? I heard the question but couldn't find the words to respond. Sue, it appears he's indecisive. What's your take? Megan inquired. After studying my face, Emma suggested, I think we should pierce the other side too. It looks better in pairs. Three more snaps of the instrument followed, each accompanied by a sharp sting. As the weight of the hoops gently tugged on my earlobes, I found the sensation unexpectedly pleasing. 
You were spot on, Megan remarked, that's exactly the look his wife wanted. Addressing me once more, she continued, your makeover is nearly complete. Would you like to see the result chosen by your wife? He's had enough of the special wine to accept whatever we've done to him, so he might as well see his new look, Emma chimed in. Megan swiveled the chair towards the mirror, handed me my glasses, and asked, what's your verdict? Staring into the mirror, I failed to recognize the person staring back at me. It took a moment to realize that the figure in the terrycloth robe was myself. Though I remained speechless, my widened eyes conveyed my astonishment. Emma picked up on my reaction. I suppose you're pleased with your makeover. Typically, we provide a new wardrobe, but your wife opted for you to return in your own clothes. She did send a shirt to avoid the challenge of fitting a sweatshirt over your new hairstyle. Why don't you go get dressed? Megan has laid out your clothes. Then you'll be ready to head home. I returned to the room and dressed in my jeans, socks, and sneakers, noticing the smoothness of my newly hairless legs as I pulled them on. Slipping into the shirt, I couldn't help but observe the absence of hair on my chest and arms. Upon re-entering the main area, I caught sight of a strange woman wearing my attire before realizing with a start that it was my own reflection. Megan was waiting for me. Driving isn't an option for you. You've had a bit too much of our wine. However, we've arranged for a limo to take you home. Leave your car here, you can retrieve it tomorrow. Feel free to drop by and share your thoughts on your new look once you're feeling more like yourself. Why don't you take one last look in the mirror while we wait for the limo? It's scheduled for five, and you still have a few moments, Emma suggested, handing me a hand mirror. I gazed at my unfamiliar reflection. What stared back was a rather plain woman, her makeup a bit excessive, with fiery red hair styled as if for a prom, completely mismatched with the clothing. Aside from the bold red nails, everything from the neck down resembled that of a man. It wasn't what I had expected. I resembled a drag queen on her day off. I know I could look better than this, I mused. Don't you have any nicer clothes I could wear? Please. Megan interrupted my thoughts. The limo is here. Payment has already been taken care of, so don't worry about that, she reassured me, handing over a videotape. Be sure to give this to your wife, it's a permanent record of your makeover so she can recreate the look at home. Oh, and by the way, the effects of the wine will wear off in about an hour, right around the time you arrive home, and you'll start reacting to things normally again. Sue added, it's been a pleasure assisting with your makeover. Hopefully, we'll see you again in the future. And just a heads up, don't attempt to wash your hair for three days, or you might encounter some real issues. The nails are semi-permanent and won't come off easily. You'll have to wait for your natural nails to grow out before removing the artificial ones. Your body hair will gradually grow back, but it could take weeks, and you won't have as much as before. Your wife will assist with caring for your newly pierced ears. Oh, and one more thing, the music you enjoyed had subliminal messages. From now on, you'll feel the urge to maintain a feminine appearance, you won't feel comfortable unless you're sporting your earrings and long nails. Dressing as a man won't fully satisfy you. Your interest in dressing as a woman will intensify, and you'll be drawn to keep your hairstyle as feminine as possible. Makeup will captivate you. After a few weeks, you'll feel compelled to return for another makeover, and next time, we'll make even more changes. I stepped out of the limo, and the driver did a double take before managing to suppress a laugh. Where to, sir? Or should I say, MS, he quipped. Emma provided him with my home address, adding, bring her home by six o'clock, but if you have time, take her to this address first. She needs to meet her co-workers. I realized, albeit with some confusion, that she had given him the address of the club where my co-workers were likely gathering for drinks after work. Will do, miss and I'll make sure she greets them properly, the driver responded with a smirk. During the ride, I noticed the driver stealing glances at me through the rearview mirror, chuckling to himself. Before I knew it, we had arrived at the club. Almost instinctively, as if on autopilot, I said, I'll be right back. Please wait here. Yes, miss. 
I mean, sir, he grinned in response. I entered the club, spotted my co-workers in the corner, and greeted them with a simple hello. At first, they didn't recognize me, but as they heard my voice and saw my facial features, their confusion turned to surprise. Is this some kind of joke? Why are you dressed like that? I never knew you were into cross-dressing. Why don't you come to work like this? My boss exclaimed. Is this why you took the day off? I want to see you in my office first thing Monday morning. We need to talk. At that moment, the driver entered. Time to leave, miss. I mean, sir. You need to get home soon, he announced. I followed his lead, still operating on autopilot, simply following instructions. He drove me home. Have a good evening, miss. I mean, sir, he bid me farewell as I exited the car. I hope you can figure out what you want to be. Entering the house, I was greeted by a chorus of voices shouting surprise. Happy birthday. Their voices trailed off as they caught sight of me, seemingly frozen in place. My wife approached, surveyed me, and then addressed our guests. My husband has had a fascination with hair for a long time. Last month, I caught him using my hot rollers when he thought I would be away for several hours. So, I decided to give him a special birthday gift. You see the result. You all know Alex as a man, now say hello to Alex as a woman. From now on, if she wants to live here, it will have to be as a woman. Since she desired it so deeply, I've set her on this path. Today isn't just Alex's birthday, it's the first day of her new life, and I invited you all here to celebrate with her. I'm not sure why he wanted to look like a woman, but I've decided to let her explore it. I was inundated with comments, some positive but mostly negative. As I began to regain my composure, I felt a rising sense of humiliation at the ordeal I had been subjected to and the exposure of my secrets to everyone present. While these thoughts churned in my mind, my wife inserted the videotape into the VCR and started playing it for our guests. Watching the footage, I witnessed my transformation from a man to a woman hair coloring, perm, waxing, eyebrow shaping, makeup application, roller set, and ear piercing all captured on screen. What was more distressing was seeing myself cooperating seemingly without hesitation. In fact, I appeared to be enjoying it. No one would believe that I was the victim here. No one would believe that deep down, I didn't truly desire to be a woman. Even as I recognized the influence of the conditioning, I found myself looking forward to returning to the salon to retrieve my car. Perhaps they could teach me how to apply makeup more skillfully and I needed to explore getting contact lenses so my glasses wouldn't obscure my eyes. I pondered what to wear for my meeting with my boss. Maybe my wife would take me shopping for new clothes tomorrow. Surely, I'd look better in a new dress, stockings, and heels. I realized I needed more earrings, after all, I was only wearing the three pairs I owned. After bidding farewell to our last guest, my wife embraced me, saying, Happy birthday. Alex. I hope it's one you'll never forget. I wouldn't have put you through this if you hadn't wanted it so badly. Now there's no need to hide your desire to dress as a woman. Everyone I could think of knows about you now, family, friends, and co-workers. Now, you need to learn how to fully embody the role you've chosen. You can count on it, I replied, uncertain of what exactly I was agreeing to, or perhaps agreeing to it all. One thing was clear. I couldn't turn back now. Too many people had witnessed my transformation for me to pretend as if nothing had happened.